Seven-year-old Wilson remembers the place where he spent his first nights away from his mother. Y cuando te llevaron, ¿a dónde fueron ustedes? This is the first office we went to. We went in here. ¿Y a dónde dormías vos? I slept in this room. Wilson's mother, Maria Antonia Lario Soto, says the two of them made their journey northward toward the U.S. border to escape violence in their hometown in Guatemala. At the end of May, as they walked across the U.S.-Mexico border in Arizona to seek asylum, they were apprehended by Border Patrol for crossing without permission. Hours later, a Border Patrol agent told Lario Soto she would be separated from her son. We were all scared because officers would tell us that we were going to be deported and our kids were going to stay here. And we wondered, how could that be possible? Nobody gives up their children just like that. They are the most precious thing for us. Lario Soto recalls the very moment Wilson was taken away from her. Around 4 a.m., they took him away from me. They didn't tell me where they were going to take him. I asked them, but they said they couldn't tell me. The only thing they told me is that he was going to be placed with other kids because he couldn't stay with me. What was that first night like for you without your son? It's a terrible life to be all alone and not knowing where he is and not being able to talk to him. I had never been away from him. It was so hard. Immigration and Customs Enforcement paid a company called MVM Inc. to transport Wilson to a shelter contracted by the Office of Refugee Resettlement. ICE allows its contractors to bring immigrant children to their own offices, like this one, leased by MVM in Central Phoenix, Arizona. But ICE said its contract doesn't allow contractors to hold children for more than 24 hours. The facilities are waiting areas for minors awaiting same-day transportation, these offices are not overnight housing facilities per the contract with ICE. But in Wilson's case, he spent two nights at one of these facilities. Liana Dunlap lives next door and over a couple of days witnessed at least two groups of children entering the building. She filmed this video the day after Wilson was brought there. I was doing my dishes and then I see a van pull up and I noticed that the van has kids in it and then they walked inside and I got a really weird feeling. I was like, that didn't seem right or normal, or I just didn't get I, a good feeling from it. And I was like, I'm going to go get my phone. And then I started recording it. Dunlap says she witnessed a separate group leaving the building. It was about four or five vans pull up. And that's when I saw them all come out. And it was probably like 80 to 90 kids come out of there. They just started having them come straight out of the door onto the vans. From just outside the office windows, she saw a blow-up mattress, a box labeled baby shampoo, and medication schedules suggesting extended stays. Though the building is now vacant, at least 200 children came through here over the course of two weeks. We were able to view an internal government database that showed, in addition to Wilson, at least 15 other children stayed here for more than 24 hours. In a second Phoenix office building leased by MVM, a concerned insurance executive also took video and photos after he saw children washing their hair in the sinks of this shared bathroom. Neither of the buildings meet requirements for a government-approved shelter. They have no outdoor playground, no kitchens, showers, and no bedrooms to keep age groups separated. Founded by three former Secret Service agents in 1979, MVM has contracted with the federal government for more than 30 years, providing guards for sites including prisons, as well as CIA personnel in Iraq. Since 2014, they've received contracts worth up to $225 million for the transportation of immigrant children. Yet this summer, MVM clarified their role in a statement posted on their website. The current services MVM provides consists of transporting undocumented families and unaccompanied children to government-licensed facilities. We have not and currently do not operate shelters or any other type of housing for minors. When we reached out to MVM about our findings that multiple children had stayed overnight, they declined an interview but responded with this statement. When we identified several instances in which our policy was not followed, MVM instituted tighter controls and gave employees instruction to prevent these regrettable exceptions from happening again. Well, the primary goal of any contractor is profit. If the well-being of children is 
profitable to them. Uh, it is potentially possible that they will do a better job. Prothap Chatterjee is the executive director of CorpWatch, a research group advocating for corporate accountability. It is not entirely surprising that MVM has been accused of skirting their obligations uh, in Arizona because these accusations have come up in the past. During the Iraq war, the CIA pulled out of a $1 billion contract with MVM for failing to provide the full number of guards for government personnel. Well, I just ask people to think if it was your three-year-old grandson placed in the hands of strangers, how would you want your three-year-old to be treated? Representative Zoe Lofgren is on the House Judiciary Committee, which supervises the Department of Homeland Security and ICE. If there is misconduct, then I think there ought to be ramifications, uh, either uh, a loss of profit or termination of the contract, depending on how severe the uh, misbehavior was. ICE did look into MVM's overnight stays and says they have outlined several specific adjustments with the contractor to rectify that issue going forward. But at the same time, ICE awarded MVM a new contract to provide translation services potentially worth up to $185 million. Lofgren says more should be done and asks the Department of Homeland Security, which oversees ICE, to investigate MVM's treatment of immigrant children based on our reporting. Ultimately, it's the government's responsibility, and they can't shirk that responsibility merely by signing a contract. We contacted the office of every Republican member of the House and Senate serving on committees that oversee ICE, but none agreed to be interviewed. After spending his seventh birthday away from his mother in a shelter, Wilson and his mother reunited in July and are living with family in Arkansas. They drove together to an orientation at Wilson's new school. The day before he started first grade, Wilson was excited to meet his teacher. You have a nice smile. And you have happy eyes. <laughs> This moment is why Lario Soto says she was seeking to cross the border in the first place for Wilson to have a good school in a safe environment. We don't come here just because we want to live fancy lives. We come here to be safe and give our children a better life. Our lives are always at risk over there. When you leave your house, you don't know if you'll come back alive or in a coffin. It's the worst. That's how it is in our country. Ladio Soto can now remain with Wilson in the United States for one year on a humanitarian parole. But after that, the future is uncertain. And it remains uncertain for the more than 100 children who are waiting to be reunited with their families. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Aura Bogado in Fort Smith, Arkansas.